What is up guys and you are back with me Elite 4 Dan and today people we have got a very special video for you guys it is our Addison Anthros Season 4 APA Draft Analysis Analysis and let's jump straight into it shall we so the draft has been going on for a few days we just, we've just finished it we've literally just finished it this video is going up today well there's obviously it's going up today you're watching it Ah, uh, uh, we just finished the draft, and everyone's teams are looking pretty powerful. I won't lie, everyone seems looking pretty cool. I'm confident, confident. I'm, no, I'm confident in our in our abilities, and I want to do well for us. You know, so make sure you smash that like button down below, because it makes me better at Pokemon apparently. <laughs> no, but do leave, do leave your thumbs, guys. Leave your thumbs. So let's jump straight into it. So our first pick was from the MU tier, which if you don't know is exclusive to the APA, the American Pokemon Association. And our first, is the, the MU tier is Mega Uber. So you have to pick, the way the, the draft works guys, you have, there are six tiers, MU, one, two, three, four, and five. And we have to pick two Pokemon from each one. And when it comes to actually battling, we have to choose one Pokemon from each tier that we've drafted. So 50-50 choice. To take into the battle so it's a lot different to normal draft um, and league that you may have seen uh, it's different it's different this season as well this wasn't how it was last season but it's new it's exciting I like it so you gotta like it as well uh, <laughs> and so our first pick in the mega uber tier I actually went for my uber first so first of all we got the we got the wheel pick in MU so we were the last pick and then so it's a snake format so we were the last pick here and then we were the first pick and it goes by that way so what this meant was a lot of the good stuff went however it's a very powerful tier so there was a lot of good stuff that being said I wanted Kieran White that went I wanted Dialga that was actually the first pick and I wanted Xerneas which is the third pick so I had no chance of getting them really being the 16th overall pick uh, but we did get Zekrom I like this guy. I've been playing a bit of Ubers lately just because I'd never used Ubers before and I knew we had to draft them in this league. So I've been playing a bit and Zekrom was on my team and he is an absolute animal. He's got a massive 150 base attack. He's got decent speed but he has got immunity to paralysis with his dragon electric typing. He's got two strong stab attacks in Outrage and uh, Bolt Strike. He's the Bolt Strike Pokemon. And he's just, as a, as a dragon type, as a my Uber, I'm really, really chuffed with this pick because obviously he gets um, immunity to Thunder Wave, which is so huge, especially because he isn't the fastest. Um, but Stab, Bolt Strike, um, and Outrage, I could put it with a Choice Scarf, I could put it with a Choice Band. Choice Band is Outrage and Bolt Strike, there's not a lot that are going to live those, to be honest with you. There's not, obviously, with Outrage, you've got to be careful of Fairy types. You know, we can't really spam Outrage until all the Fairy types are gone, but. It's all right. Um, and with that, is there anything else I want to say about Zekrom? Not really. As I say, he's just a complete animal. He can break through most walls, to be honest with you. And I'm really, really happy to have him on the team. Next up, we have got our Mega. Now, this was a tough choice. This was a tough choice. I kind of, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Looking back on it, I kind of wish I chose something else. But I just got really excited at the fact that he hadn't been taken yet. So I went and scooped him up and it is Mega Heracross. Mega Heracross is my favourite Mega. He is my favourite Mega. Despite the fact that he looks like Pinocchio, whatever, uh, he has got an amazing ability and skill link. Megas have to evolve on the first turn. So obviously, he had, normal Heracross does get Moxie, which is an, an amazing ability, but he does have to Mega Evolve first turn, so we won't actually get to use Moxie. So it will be Skill Link, the ability of our Mega Heracross, and which actually is probably one of my favourite abilities as well. Like, Mega Heracross gets some insane moves like Bullet Seed, Pin Missile, and Rock Blast, which all benefit from Skill Link. If you didn't know, Skill Link basically guarantees a move that hits two to five times it guarantees they'll hit five times every time so a bit so say bullet speed has a bullet bullet speed bullet seed has base 15 attack or something so that's times by five that gives you a base 85 75 fucking hell i'm awful base 75 uh power which doesn't sound that 
<laughs> but trust me, it is. Along, along with pin missile being uh, stab, and I don't know. I think Pulitzer might be stronger. Than that. I don't even know. Ignore me. Anyway, so uh, Mega Caracross. So the coverage on this thing is insane. Also, it's got two amazing stab attacks in close combat and pin missile. Gets rock blast, bullet seed, and it gets other great moves like it gets Mega Horn. They're all really, really great moves, guys, which all complement its massive 185 base, stat attack, base attack stats, which is pretty fucking awesome. Uh, also, it's not it's, it's, it's quite frail. Two times weeks of flying. Uh, however, I think with the rest of our draft picks, we have made uh, blah, 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 accounted for that. We've got really good synergy amongst our Pokemon. So with that, let's move on to tier one. Tier one, tier one and tier two are basically OU pretty much. And our first pick in tier one, pick our overall third pick was Thunderous Incarnate. Uh, I wanted Thunderous because of Prankster. Prankster is the main insane ability which lets your Pokemon move first if it's using a status move or a not. I think it's a non-damaging move. So, Thunder Wave, Prankster Thunder Wave is amazing for slowing down those fast threats. And obviously, a, a lot of the time, actually, I don't know whether it's just me being lucky, but a lot of the time, I th Prankster Thunder Wave, and then obviously the opponent gets then gets to the move, but they get fully paralyzed. They get fully paralyzed straight up, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if it has a higher chance to do anything, or maybe I'm just very lucky. But it's uh, paralyzing a Pokemon really does cripple it so much. Obviously, then it, it limits the the fact that you can't toxic or uh, will o' wisp or whatever. But obviously, we can play make that play by play. You know, if something would be better off being toxic or um, willowed, then that's a, that's a judgment I've got to make. And we've got we've got Pokemon further down the line that are capable of doing that. Uh, Life Orb can be put on Thunderous. You can put a Choice Band on it. It's a choice Scarf. If if you're going to be using Thunder Wave and Prankster, you can't really choice it unless you're just going to switch back straight back out. But a Life Orb has been putting in some work obviously you've got great uh, momentum building in volt switch uh, thunderbolt is its strongest stab attack which is pretty awesome and it also gets nasty plots which raises it's already i can't remember what its uh, special attacks that is but it's pretty pretty low i think it's, uh, it's definitely above 100 maybe maybe 110 or something 115 uh, and it has 111 speed which that one that 11 on the end literally just outspeeds the rest most of the, the rest of the tier so other threat other strong threats Obviously, tier one and tier two, they're going to be better Pokemon than, say, tier three, tier four, tier five. Um, arguably, but yeah. Uh, so it outspeeds a lot of the Pokemon in the same tier, which is a very, very handy. And yeah, so I think Thunderous is a pretty cool pick. Uh, I've never used them before. I've been, oh, I've been using them lately, but prior to the last say, week, I haven't really used them. So I'm excited. It's going to be good. Obviously, we've got two electric types now in Zekrom and Thunderous, uh, but I feel with. Prankster and the Thunder Wave, I think it really complements Zekrom Thunderous because it just obviously Zekrom isn't the fastest, and just that T Wave can allow Zekrom to make a late game sweep if half his team is paralyzed, let's say, or you know, if, or if his speedy threats are paralyzed. So I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited. Uh, pick number four is Heatran. <laughs> I love this guy. He's got so many resistances. Poison immunity, which is always handy. Swi like having a switch into Toxic is just incredible. Obviously, he's four times weak to ground. He's also weak to fighting and fire. Four times weak to ground is a problem. Um, however, we do, as I say, already... I was actually... <laughs> uh, yeah, it is a problem. Um, so, there are ways around it. Obviously, you can put an air balloon on him. Just make sure he... He never comes in on a fucking earthquake, and he should be fine. Uh, but he's also one of the most versatile Pokemon in the game, guys. He gets rocks, he gets taunt, he gets toxic, he gets lava plume, which is his uh, signature move, which complements his base 130 special attack, 110 or 130, which is obviously amazing. Uh, the fact that he's got st stealth rocks was big for me as well because I didn't have a stealth rocker so far, obviously. Um, I was gonna say. So the the synergy in the team right now, you're looking at Thunderous and Heatran would be excellent together because obviously Thunderous is flying, part flying, resist, uh, immune to those ground attacks. But we can only pick one of them to take into the battle, guys, each time. So it, it's not it's annoying, 
because those two do work so well together. But we've got good synergy throughout the rest of the team, so not a problem. Uh, tier 2, guys. Tier 2. Our fifth overall pick, our first in Tier 2, is Bishop. A Bishop is a Pokemon that I've recently fallen in love with. I've never really... It never really stuck to me before. It just looks... I don't know. Because it's a... Um, I'm pretty sure it's a Gen 5 Pokemon. Not certain, but I'm pretty sure it's Gen 5 Pokemon. And Gen 5 Pokemon I don't really like that much. I know I've got like... I think I've got like three. <laughs> three Gen 5 Pokemon out of four. Or five, but whatever. Um, I literally have. Uh, but Gen 5 is the one where... The, the generation where... I didn't really, I wasn't really into Pokemon. I didn't, I didn't play Gen 5. I still haven't played Gen 5. I will at some point. I've got the game up there. I've got Black up there. So I'll play that at some point. But um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, but playing with it now, I realise that it is an amazing Pokemon Bishop. Uh, Defiant is an amazing ability. It raises attack two stages for every time you get a drop stat. So Intimidate, obviously that would just count, counteract the Intimidate and give it a plus one attack boost. But anything like, um, it's, it's when your opponent lowers your stat, not like if you use close combat, for example. Bishop, does, I'm not even sure, I don't think Bishop gets close combat, but you know what I mean. Um, so, which is amazing. Uh, Sword Dance it gets, gets Stab on Knock Off, Sucker Punch and Iron Head, which are all three amazing moves. Obviously being part Steel type, it does get Poison Immunity, which is amazing. And also gets Stab Pursuits, which is pretty cool. So we can Pursuit Trap those uh, pesky Psychic types. Um, and it's also with the dark typing immunity to psychic, which can't you know you can't argue with that. That's just handy. Uh, you can pair it with loads of different items, guys. You can pair it with assault vest, black glasses, life orb, lumberry to remove them random skull buttons. Um, so th from things like bulky water types, the bishop can actually set up on normally. If you've got a lumberry, you can re remove that skull burn, and bishop can really set up on that, which is excellent. Okay, right, so we've uh, just skipped a bit because I forgot to put the next pick in, uh, which is our second tier two pick, which is actually Ditto. Uh, so we've just uh, I'm recording this after I've, I'm recording this whilst I edit it. I'm actually sitting in bed right now. But Ditto is an amazing Pokemon because of its unique ability. Well, it's not unique, but <laughs> it has the Imposter ability, which basically it's like the move Transform um, without having to waste a move actually transforming. And so if you put Ditto, what we'll be doing. If you put Ditto with an item, say a choice a choice scarf, then it will outspeed whatever Pokemon you're transforming into. Imposter basically copies the Pokemon you're against straight away without um, without the the HP stat, but everything else, all the other stats, it copies, which is pretty cool. And then with a choice scarf, it will outspeed whatever you're against, and hopefully we'll be able to check it slash counter it really well. So I'm excited for it. It'll be a bit. It'll, it'll be something different. Something different to try. Obviously, Bishop is. You know, you know what you're going to do, but Ditto's a bit of a surprise. So it makes us a bit harder to uh, plan against. But we'll just see how it goes. Okay, and uh, back to uh, the original video. <laughs> ah. So moving on, guys. Tier 3. I wanted Crobat. I wanted Crobat, but I got sniped. I got sniped by Hendo. Go abuse him. <laughs> I don't really, but I did get sniped by Hendo. And Crobat went, and I was really, really upset about that because, I, again, when I'd been playing on, I've been playing Showdown, and I've been testing around with Ubers, and I'd been using Zekrom, Thunderous, Bishop, oh, Zekrom, Thunderous, Bishop. Um, I had been using Crobat in that team, as well as a couple of others, which I'll talk about later. Um, and Crobat was my defogger. Brave Bird is an amazing move, um, as well as having ability to re reliable recovery and roost which is amazing. Infiltrator ability, which I love as well. Let's Infiltrator lets you hit through um, things like screens and substitutes. Well, not you can't hit through substitutes, but you can you, you can use like Toxic through a uh, substitute, I think. I'm not certain, but I'm pretty sure. Which, so it's a pretty cool ability, guys. But instead of Crobat, we got something that I'm actually quite happy about instead. Uh, sticking with the poison typing, we got Nidoking. And Nido King is a Pokemon that uh, Cloud, Cloud Nimbus the, of the Natural Infernapes had last season, and Na uh, Cloud helped me out a bit. Like he, when I was literally brand spanking new to the league, he helped me out, taught me a few things, taught me how to team build, which I'm really grateful for. Shout out to you, Cloud. Um, and he also told me to scoop up Nido Queen like last season. He he had Nido Queen, Nido King, 
It's only to scoop up Needle Queen now, which I did, and Needle Queen actually put in some serious work. So I've gone for the big one today, this time, guys. I've gone for Needle King. He is literally the coverage king. And obviously, in the normal games, he can learn any fucking TM pretty much. Sheer Force is an amazing ability. Also gets Poison Point. Um, I think he gets Rivalry. Or oh, that might be Needle Queen. I think they both do. But Sheer Force, paired with a Life Orb and some excellent attacks, this guy is no. no is nothing to joke about. He's. An absolute machine. Gets Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Earth Power, Sludge Wave. He gets Stealth Rocks. He gets Toxic, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Uh, and he's just so he's just such a good Pokemon. Obviously weak to... Um, sit very weak to ground. Things like Ice are a problem. Uh, but th they're things we've got to work around. We have got quite an offensive team. Um, which we sort out in a minute. Our pick number 8 is... Cloyster. Cloyster is an absolute machine. I know what you're thinking. I never thought Cloyster was much of a machine before. That was until I started playing Showdown. And I came into this guy too many fucking times. I didn't know. Well, I didn't know, right? Cloyster gets Skill Link. That's the ability that Mega Heracross has got. Which gives it two moves that hit two to five times. Guarantees they hit five times. Which is so fucking broken. Cloyster, so Cloyster gets, with that ability... Uh, it gets, where is it, Icicle Spear, which is, takes two to five times, Rock Blast, which is two to five times, it gets Ice Shard, which is a priority ice move, which is really handy for the Dragon types and such, it gets Explosion, which is always fun, and it gets Hydro Pump, which is also obviously an amazing move. Uh, the best move, however, that Cloyster gets is Shell Smash. Shell Smash is an amazing move, pair it with a, um, there's some kind of herb, a power herb? No, not a power herb. A white herb. Pair, pair it with a white herb. Shell smash lowers your special and normal defense and raises attack, special defense, uh, special attack and speed, which is insane. Uh, by times two, that increases it. Not just by 1.5 times two. And the white herb then re removes the defense drops. So you're at times two speed and attack. Special attack isn't important. Uh, yeah, special attack isn't important. Um, for us, unless we ran hydro, hydro pump, but we won't, to be honest. Maybe, who knows? Um, oh, sorry, guys. And uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great, great thing. Resist water, resist ice four times, which is really good, obviously, with um, our ice weaknesses in the team at the minute. So from Thunderous and Zekrom, and even Nido King, but Nido King is in the team. Um, where was I? Uh, so yeah, with that ice weakness, ice resistance, you get great synergy. What the fuck is that? I think someone just got shot. Oh well. Um, <laughs> I'm sure that'll be fine. Uh, so that's synerg great synergy with Thunderous and Zekrom. Uh, and the ice stab as well is really handy. And oh, oh, to top it all off, it's got an amazing 180 base defense stat, which is incredible. It speaks for itself. I don't need to say anymore. Tier 4, guys. Just like tier 3, we wanted Crobat. Tier 4, and we got sniped by Hendo. Tier 4, we wanted Amamola and got sniped by Hendo. So, was not happy about that. Hendo, this time you can go abuse Hendo because fuck him. I'm joking, don't. Please, maybe. Who knows? We'll see. So, do what you like. Okay. <laughs> um, Hendo is the coach of the uh, Motor City Meganiums. Uh, if you didn't know, you probably wouldn't know, but anyway. Uh, so, instead of Amamola, I went for our ninth overall pick, which is Kofagrigus. Kofagrigus is a decent Pokemon. It gets Mummy ability, which swaps basically that ability on contact. I think it's contact. Uh, so which cripples Pokemon which rely on their abilities, such as a huge power Azumarill, huge power Medicam. Uh, Levitate users. They are now, now no, no ground immunity there, which is obviously awesome. It gets Willow Will Wisp, which is an amazing move. When I was talking about the uh, Prancer Thunder Wave on Thunderous earlier, we were saying some things might prefer to be Willows, or would struggle more if they were Willows. Cripples attacking uh, Sweepers, obviously. Um, so that's an option we have with Cathagrigus. Uh, Pain Split gives it some recovery, and it also gets Nasty Plot and Calm Mind, so we can switch it up depending on what we want to do with Cathagrigus. It's got great defensive stats, so Calm Mind would boost them, or the, spe the special defense even more. Nasty Plot does make it a more of an offensive threat quickly, so does Calm, Calm, Calm Mind obviously increases special attack, but Nasty Plot 
sharply increases, which is also amazing. And uh, this ghost type in, which is our first ghost type on the team, means that it can spin block. Because obviously rapid spin is a normal type move, so if it switches in, Cathagoras switches in on a spin block, on a um, rapid spin, the rapid spin won't work, the hazards will stay in, which is obviously amazing. It also gets access to Haze and Trick Room, which are cool moves as well. Haze will be handy for things like Xerneas. Geomancy Xerneas is obviously, I think, it's, it's the biggest threat in the uh, in the, the league, to be honest, guys. With uh, Primal Groudon banned, Primal Kroger banned, um, Arceus obviously banned. Uh, it is the biggest threat in the tier, so we had to make sure we had some kind of answer to it. And we have somewhere. <laughs> uh, pick number 10, guys, is Hitmon Top. And Hitmon Top is a cool Pokemon. I prefer Hitmon Lee. Hitmon Lee is the better Hitmon Top, to be honest. That, that went literally a turn before me. So, was pretty guided about that. But Hitmon Top does get um, gets a choice of a couple of abilities in Intimidate and it also gets Technician. Uh, probably will be rocking Intimidate most of the time. It gets decent defences. Um, but the inter Oh shit, I've just fucked myself. Hello, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll probably be rocking out with Intimidate because that uh, helps out its decent defences as well. Kind of helps it start sturdy itself up a bit more. Uh, gets Rapid Spin and it also gets Foresight. And Foresight allows you to hit Ghost types with normal type moves. So Rapid Spin, as the same with Cathagogus being a Spin Blocker, uh, there's no danger of that with him on top because it can Foresight beforehand. Obviously that takes up two moves, uh, two, two move slots and two turns in the battle, but you know, it's, if the opponent has got a ghost type, then it's something you think about. And that allows hazard removal without worrying about any ghost types. It also gets close combat, which is a fucking amazing move, enough said. Tier 5, guys. And this is where we got sniped for the third and final time. Probably, actually, we got sniped more than that, to be fair. But the final time we got sniped, I wanted Granbull. I wanted a fairy type on the team. I did not get a fairy type on the team. I'm going to have to have a look on the free agents list to be honest. After the first battle we can look into the free agents and we can look into trades. So I may have to talk to, uh, uh, Gramble got took by Carson, it wasn't Hendo this time. So I may have to talk to one of them, and see if we can get some Pokemon, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so our 11th pick overall, our first in tier five was Malamar. So Malamar, I was surprised to see in this tier because I always see it competitively. It's a good Pokemon, it's got psychic community. It's only weakness is a fairy and bug. It's four times weak to bug. This one ideal. Uh, it gets con it gets two great abilities, guys. It gets contrary, which so say it's a, it would say intimidate obviously lowers the opposing Pokemon's attack. Uh, so contrary would make intimidate raise its attack. So if it comes in against an intimidate mon, then its attack would go up rather than going down. Same as so, and that's why this Pokemon's so good because it gets superpower, and superpower is a move that lowers. Uh, I can't think what ta what stats it lowers. It lowers stats, but with contrary, it raises stats. So it's a fucking great move. It allows you to set up whilst attacking as well. And yeah, so it's a great thing. Infiltrator, it also gets. Infiltrator and Toxic, which I was saying earlier, lets you hit through things like substitutes and screens and stuff like that. It also gets Stab Knockoff. Can't go wrong. Love it. Our final pick, guys. There was nothing left. There was really nothing left, and I really struggled with this pick. I looked for a long time. I usually have my picks planned out, but there really was nothing. The only thing I wanted in Tier 5 was Gramble, and I'm quite upset that we didn't get it. I'm literally going to try uh, and offer a trade with Carson after Week 1. But our 12th pick was Rampardos. Rampardos has 165 base attack. However, the rest of its stats are shit. Yeah, they are fucking booty. It's very fucking slow. It's got like base 58 speed or something. Which, it was. it's just not good. It's just not good. The 165 attack, it can be worked around. If we say we, we've got Cathagogus with Trick Room, in which case, Rampardos becomes a fucking threat. Our team isn't that fast. So Trick Room is a possibility for our team. And it's quite exciting to think about. You know, it's a really cool prospect. So I'm quite excited. Uh, Rampardos is a rock type. Um, which we hadn't had in the team before, so uh, powerful stab attacks there, which we didn't ha necessarily have. It's got Mold Breaker, which again can hit through uh, abilities, so things like Levitate won't be a problem, so we can spam those Earthquakes. Uh, it gets Sheer Force as well, guys. 
And you know how much I love Sheer Force. You pr maybe you don't, but I love Sheer Force. Last season I had Nilo Queen and Feraligator, who both have Sheer Force. Pair them up with a Life Orb, guys. Sheer Force, basically, it's... Uh, if you didn't know, I don't think I explained it earlier. Um, Sheer Force... If you use a move like Ice Beam, which has a secondary chance to, say, freeze, it removes the secondary chance of the move and increases the power of the move by 1.3. So, to times by 1.3, sorry, by 30%, which is huge. So it makes Ice Beam, which is a base, what, 90, 90 attack, that makes it a base 120 attack. Which is pretty fucking cool. Um, and also, it... What Sheer Force does is it removes the knockback damage from a Life Orb. So you get even more damage with your Life Orb with no recoil. And it's a, it's a really, really amazing ability, to be honest with you guys. Uh, it, it does kind of always suggest that you're going to be pairing it with a Life Orb, because it just makes sense, to be honest. It just boosts power, it removes the only downside of having a Life Orb. Can't go wrong with it. Uh, so that is our team, guys. Uh, let me know what you think below. I'm pretty happy with it. As I say, I'm going to try and make some trades. But our first match, we will be using this team. Because trades and free agents don't open until after the first week. So our first match, which I can't remember who it's against right now. I think it's against the Arizona Diamond Storms. I think we're against the Arizona Diamond Storms first up. And that is on the 1st of August. Well, it's not on the 1st of August. That's when the week starts. It will be uploaded on this Sunday, which is the 7th. It will be uploaded on the Sunday, which is the 7th. We may be having a uh, switch up with the schedules, um, because obviously Emerald goes up on Sundays normally. We may be changing that so we don't have two videos a day on Sundays. Um, we may be changing that up. We'll have to see. But, yeah, you'll see what happens. We may, we may also have a team builder. I haven't decided yet. I don't know whether I have time to. But we may also have team builder episodes. Uh, so, yeah, guys, let me know what you think below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this draft analysis. Um, if you have any analysis of your own, make sure you comment them down below. Let me know. Let me know ways that you'd use Pokemon that I maybe haven't mentioned. Then maybe, maybe I've thought about it, but I haven't mentioned it. So, you know, put it below. Discuss amongst yourselves. Have a good day, guys. I hope you're excited for the new season because I really, really am. I'm confident. Thanks for watching, guys. Goodbye.